Hi folks. A few years ago, I built a stream table for my Earth and Space Science class. It's something I've always wanted to have, but unfortunately, the ones I saw online were way out of my budget. So I took it upon myself to build one from scratch, using materials that are easily available online or from a home improvement store. With this table, we can model how a young stream evolves into an old river, abandoning meanders and forming oxbow lakes. We can also demonstrate how rivers can be rejuvenated by things like tectonic uplift events or by a drop in sea level. So let's look at how the stream table operates and how we can use it to model the formation and evolution of a river system. I built this stream table a few years ago for my Earth and Space Science class. I've used the plastic ones that you can get online for about 100 bucks, but they never quite captured students' attention. It felt more like drawing lines in a sandbox than studying real stream systems. So I decided to build a much larger sandbox on wheels. My goal was to create something that I could customize without paying thousands of dollars for a large stainless steel one, although they are fantastic. I purchased the plumbing materials online for about 75 bucks, which consisted of a submersible fountain pump, vinyl tubing, fittings, valves, and mounting clips. I configured the table with five adjustable valves, allowing me to adjust both the flow volume and the river position. It also features a clean-out hose for easy maintenance. The business end of the table features a six-ton bottle jack that raises the table by about eight inches. This allows us to model stream flow at higher elevations and conduct experiments, such as river rejuvenation through tectonic uplift. It also makes draining the water much easier during cleanup. The bottom of the table has both a main drain and two sets of overflow pipes. The first set can be plugged to flood the lower section, simulating a large body of water like a bay or an ocean, which helps us demonstrate how deltas form. The second set acts as an emergency spillway to prevent water from overflowing. I originally designed this to use a sink stringer, but it kept getting stuck in the housing due to the sand. So I picked up a strategy from a bad guy in a Christmas movie and plugged the drain up with clay and use a mesh strainer to catch the sand. To keep sand out of the pump, I devised a simple, cost-effective solution. I took a plastic container, drilled small holes into it, and created an opening in the lid for the supply line. The pump sits inside the container, which rests on a plastic tray, preventing sand from being pulled in. At some point, I might 3D print a custom pump housing, but this setup has worked fine for years, so I don't see a need to change it right now. With the pump submerged in about 16 gallons of water, I pre-soaked the sand to maintain a consistent water level. When fully saturated, the sand holds an additional 8 gallons of water. For the first demonstration, I create a stream valley with slight meanders to showcase the erosional power of water. Using a worksheet, my students observe and illustrate key features, including point bars, cut banks, deltas, and any oxbow lakes that form. I also add model trees and structures to provide reference points, showing how rivers constantly change over time. If any of the structures fall into the river, it serves as a teachable moment about how debris in a riverbed can alter the flow of water. To demonstrate how base level changes affect rivers, I remove the first set of drain plugs. This causes the river's base level to drop, mimicking what happened during the last ice age when sea levels were hundreds of feet lower. Even relatively gentle rivers like the Susquehanna carved out deep valleys, helping to shape what is now the Chesapeake Bay. I also use the bottle jack to simulate how raising a river's profile increases kinetic energy. In the context of the Susquehanna River, this models the effects of both erosional isostatic rebound and tectonic uplift of the Appalachian Mountains, two processes that played a major role in shaping Pennsylvania's landscape. The stream table also allows us to explore niche geological events, such as spillover erosion, when a large lake overflows its banks or an ice dam and carves out a canyon. This is what happened to form Pennsylvania's Grand Canyon during the last ice age. It's an incredibly young geologic feature and a great example of how the power of water can shape vast landscapes in just a few thousand years, a blink of an eye in geologic time. Another phenomenon we can observe is headward erosion and how waterfalls retreat upstream over time, such as how Niagara Falls migrates at a rate of about one foot per year. I like to wrap up the lesson by connecting it to Pennsylvania history with a model of the South Fork Dam which failed catastrophically in 1889 and led to the Johnstown Flood. I explain how the dam originally had a culvert and at least one spillway, 
but the culvert was removed and the spillway blocked with screens to prevent imported game fish from escaping. When those screens became clogged with debris during a major storm, the spillway failed to drain and water overtopped the dam, resulting in the deadliest disaster in Pennsylvania's history. When I first designed this stream table, I had no idea how much I'd actually be able to do with it. It's definitely a conversation starter, and one of the first things students ask me about when they walk into my room for the first time. Of all the teaching tools I've designed, it is definitely my favorite. If you've made it this far, then I hope you enjoy these overhead time-lapse shots. Thanks for watching.